Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting. We made it to mid-October. Appreciate everybody joining us today. We've got some good stuff to cover this week uh, and some, some demos with Spencer McIntyre from our Dharma research team taking us through the framework bits, which I appreciate. So let's hop on in. And let's hop into the Metasploit framework, which everybody loves. Um, I'm going to ha virtually hand over the mic to Spencer, and he, he'll take us through. Spencer? Hello, everyone. All right, so we have one new module uh, for the past two weeks, uh, but a whole slew of new features and uh, bug fixes that we'll get to momentarily. Uh, this new module uh, exploits an XXE in SAP's internet graphics server, uh, which is very interesting. We don't see a whole lot of exploits for XXE. So if this is something that you're interested in looking at as a uh, web application vulnerability, this module is an excellent example of that. Uh, this was provided by community contributor Vladimir Ivanov and Yvonne uh, Gnur, uh, and it exploits CVE 2018-2393. Uh, now, this module is pretty cool in that the module author also added in um, a couple of different ways to exploit this vulnerability to both leak files as well as uh, create a denial of service condition. So it's a fantastic example of exploiting this class of vulnerability. So thank you very much to those uh, community contributors for that. And uh, we will see a uh, demo of this uh, by our own Grant Wilcox. We'll be showing this and walking us through it. Uh, so for enhancements and features, uh, we have an update to the SAP service discovery, which allows uh, up, uh, identifying the SAP internet graphics servers um, that are vulnerable to the module that we just mentioned. And this was also brought to us by a community contributor, uh, Vladimir Ivanov. Um, so we have uh, some really good improvements for coverage for that particular service. Uh, we also have tab completion um, improvements for the options uh, that came out of our Google Summer of Code. Uh, so thank you to uh, community contributor uh, Maria Bellin for that and her hard work in bringing that to us. Uh, we have a disclosure date in RuboCop linting rule. So we're enforcing ISO 8601 dates. Uh, that was thanks to uh, our own Alan David Foster. Uh, ISO 8601 dates are a very common standard, so we're going to be uh, using that. It's going to be uh, keeping us kind of consistent internationally, hopefully in a, a date that's easily understood uh, regardless of region. Uh, I myself added in an option that was requested by penetration testers, and that was to add the domain uh, option to the uh, CVE 2020-0688, which was the remote exchange exploit from earlier this year. And we also have uh, improved module docs uh, for zero logon. And uh, as far as uh, bug fixes go, uh, we have a uh, fixed uh, pivot stage data size that was fixed by Alan. Um, and this addresses an issue that was brought around uh, by Metasploit 6 and fixes uh, a pivoting capabilities uh, by interpreter. So if you're experiencing that issue, uh, it should be addressed now. Uh, we're always showing module actions uh, within the info command. That was another improvement or a fix that was made by uh, our very own Alan David Foster. Uh, I myself did a little bit of housekeeping where we removed modules whose uh, deprecation date has passed. Um, those modules uh, that were deprecated, uh, all of their functionality has been retained. So don't worry, we're not losing anything there. Uh, Hoodie converted an issue uh, where uh, myworkspace.id was referenced. And so it was causing issues on Metasploit installations that did not have a database uh, connection. Um, I also added in a disconnect after the named pipe uh, that was utilized by a Git system, which fixes uh, some issues uh, or in a uh, memory leak within the Windows interpreter's Git system command. And community contributor 0x4443421 uh, fixed the post Windows gather smart hash dump um, from skipping the RID 1001 uh, within the data output. So now you can actually get the information for uh, that specific RID, which can be useful in certain contexts. And uh, as always, you can go ahead and check out the Metasploit weekly wrap up on blog.rapid7.com. Uh, so huge thanks to all of the community contributors uh, that helped us with the uh, enhancements, the features, and uh, that new module. So big thanks to all of them. Woohoo.
And with that, it is demo time. Grant, are you ready? Yeah. So this video, um, just before you started, uh, so this actually comes directly from our contributor. So this comes directly from Vladimir. Um, the fund might be a little bit small, but I'm going to try and voice over as much of it as possible so that you can understand what's going on. So if you just want to start the video, so long. So basically, this is the XXE vulnerability within SAP IGS. Um, it allows you to essentially read any files as the user running the SAP IGS server. Now, typically, this is going to be the admin user who installs the SAP IGS server, but it depends on who actually installs it. It could most of the time it's going to be an admin, but obviously in a more restricted environment, it could be a lower privilege user. So just keep that in mind when you're running this. So here we're just going to go up and start up the MSF console. Um, we're going to check that we have the workspace. Now, this isn't necessarily needed, but um, Ivan was a bit concerned regarding just keeping the workspace clean because we do save some stuff to the database. Here, yeah, so that's just what you're seeing as part of this um, workspace setup. So then we're going to go ahead and start the module. We're going to go ahead and set up the R host. And just set up the different options. Um, in this case, he is setting a proxy. So you will see in a little bit that the the reason he sets up a proxy is just so that we can see the traffic later on. Um, so you, you will see both later on in the demo video just to show that we can capture the traffic and see what's going on. So we're then going to go ahead and run the check method. Um, so he's just showing that we've got the verb interceptor listening and we can see the traffic here. Um, you can also see that there's a generic sort of error page. Um, so it is what we expect. And we can also see that um, we can read the et cetera host, sorry, et cetera OS release file. Um, so basically, basically our response just says, hey, you know, we can actually go ahead and read the file, but it doesn't necessarily read it per se. Um, We then go ahead and try and read the accelerate password file. Um, this is the default in the module, and you can see that it's saved it to a separate uh, file on the system. We then go ahead and retrieve that uh, URL, which is just shown here, um, just so that you can see the request and response. So yeah, you can see we, we send it to this uh, URL underneath the output directory, and we have the contents of the Accelerator password file. And uh, furthermore, he also went ahead and added in the information to the services. So if there's any other parts of your code that you rely on the services or on the vulnerabilities, as you can see below, then it will report that correctly. And finally, we have the output of the Excel password file saved to delete. All right, so the next uh, one that we have is a little um, demo of one of the bug fixes. Uh, this was specifically regarding a bug within the smart hash dump um, post exploitation module for Windows. So if you just want to go to the next slide, um, so this was a bug, just before we start the video, this was a bug specifically regarding the fact that RID 1001 um, was mistakenly thought to be a service account within the code. It turns out this is not the case, um, and the fix for this appropriately addresses it. So if you just want to go ahead and start the video, so on. So here we're just going to set up a handler. Um, I'm just showing the options to show you. It's just a regular interpreter handler, um, and that's the R host. Um, don't ask me why that was the IP address for this example, but it was. Um, so just ignore the fact that 
to load with an IP address. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run the bind shell handler on target. Uh, we do run it as admin purely because we need the permissions associated with it to properly dump um, the, I guess you would say the information is part of the uh, post module that we run. So I'm just showing that we're doing that. We're getting the system just to make sure that everything's on fine. Um, and that the module, that the post module that we run in doesn't run into any issues. So yeah, now we're just going to run the, um, the post module. Just grabbing the proper path here. And we'll go ahead and uh, show the options. Um, now you can see there is a get system option. Um, so we're just going to show that briefly. Now you saw earlier that I did actually get the system myself, but if you wanted to, you could set that to true to have it just do it automatically. Um, we're then just setting the session to three, so the previous session, and we're going to go ahead and run this. Um, so this is going to go ahead and just dump all of the information. Um, so you can see there's a couple of different things that occurred. We got the hashes. We dumped that into a local file, and we just gathered a whole bunch of other stuff. We also dumped the password hints as well. Um, now, previously, this was not being output for the user with RID 1001, as you can see at the very bottom there. So normally what would happen before is that it would skip the password hints for the, the user with RID 1001, and it would also skip dumping the password hash. Um, what ends up actually happening is that if you're on a, a Windows 7 system, or I presume also on earlier systems, the RID 1001 uh, RID is essentially the RID that will be created when you add another user to the system. So if you just have a Windows 7 system with the uh, admin user, then the RID will typically be 1000. And then as soon as you add another user, it's 1001. Um, on later versions of Windows, such as Windows 10, it can get a little bit more complex and it doesn't necessarily follow that format. So this fix essentially fixes that presumption that the RID 1001 is going to be some sort of system account or something that's not used. Thank you, Grant. Those are great demos. Really appreciate you showing them today. Super cool. And uh, that leads us into our attacker KB section, the attacker knowledge base, where you can learn about and discuss which phones matter and why or why not. Just visit attackerkb.com. Uh, we've got a demo today of some Metasploit module and search filter uh, improvements uh, from Matthew. All right, so uh, we made some improvements to the search filter uh, option on Attacker KB. Uh, the first is an introduction of a new feature, which is to be able to narrow the scope by um, whether or not the topic or vulnerability has an available Metasploit module. Uh, I'll do a quick demonstration of that and also walk through that there were some fixes. So let's say I'm interested in RPC. I'm going to run a, a search term a query with RPC. You can see that I have 442 results. And some may have noticed that CVE year, CVE year broke. We moved some data around on the back end. The filter has been updated uh, to work now. I don't know if this is working fully. I don't know. We haven't deployed that change yet. So that will be coming. Uh, so I should probably switch over, but I think it'll still kind of work here. Yeah. So let's say I, I narrow, I'm looking for RPC, but I'm only interested in something that came out this year. So I'll narrow the scope by 2020, get down to 28 results. And maybe I'm really just interested in something that has a Metasploit module. Maybe I'm trying to attack something. And I know I have RPC open and uh, I want to see what do we have an available module for? All right, so here I can see that I just scoped down that 28 down to four results, and all of these should have a Metasploit module present. 
So let's say I'm interested in this when I click here and we should see that Metasploit module information so that I can bounce over to that if I want to, to check it out and take a closer look at that particular module. Um, so that is live on the site. The fix to CVE -er, uh, will be deployed uh, soonish. Uh, another thing that changed that's not deployed, I'll go over to my local instance just to demonstrate this. This is always seen as a hack. It was originally unintentional behavior and the search where if you used a blank search term, you'd see all of the results. Um, that hack sort of went away when we made some changes. Uh, it's been re-implemented as a proper feature for now. Uh, so searching with no term will give you all of the search results, which gets a little fun if you want to then say like, well, what do we have Metasploit module for? And you can narrow that scope down and look at, uh, take a closer look at the assessments possibly on uh, vulnerabilities that have Metasploit modules. And that's all. That's super neat. Really useful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm hoping it kind of, what I found interesting was uh, poking around in the data that there, when I was searching with what has a Metasploit module, that I was finding things that had no assessments. So I thought it might be interesting to, I'm not, of course, I'm not going to show up here while I'm demoing it, but that was like an interesting angle of like finding new things to assess is something that you actually have uh, tooling that you could do sort of hands-on uh, work with and then might might drive, be a different vector for people to, to write assessments for vulnerabilities. I, I don't want to throw shade at, at GitHub or, um, you know, the way that uh, people try to find Metasploit modules these days, but having the assessments of like hot vulnerabilities or really useful vulnerabilities to attackers alongside that information about module availability is just like an absolutely amazing tool for defenders. You know, if one of these phones has a Metasploit module, it, it goes from, ooh, this is this is maybe a thing to like, holy crap, we got to do something about this. And that's so important for folks to know. That's a really good point. This is awesome. Thanks, guys. Yep, it's alive. Uh, the, the fixes will be deployed uh, likely this week, I would imagine. Nice. Super. Thank you for, for the demo, Matthew. Absolutely. Appreciate that. All right. And uh, if you're in a country that celebrates Halloween, which I don't know if anybody outside the U.S. does, but have a safe and happy Halloween. And uh, see you next time. Take care. Excellent.